Hey game developers, Blah from Zenfinity.net, and in this video we're going to be talking about image effects in Unity as uh, in a previous version not too long ago these post-processing effects were included and uh, the day came where Unity developers did not have to have ugly games anymore. Uh, <laughs> and that's just a joke, but but uh, truthfully, Unity really has been stepping up the uh, graphical performance with the in-house tools, such as the physically based shader and the image effects. Uh, so it's now a lot easier to make your game look better, but it's also a lot easier to make your game run horribly. Uh, so there are some things to keep in mind when you're using image effects, uh, such as how uh, poor your performance can get, uh, and how good your game can look. And those are the main two things we're going to talk about. Um, so if you're not familiar with all these game design tools and you're thinking, or terms rather, and you're thinking, well, what is this guy even talking about? Uh, you know, performance intensive optimization. What is, <laughs> what, am I, what is this guy talking about? I just want my game to look good. Um, then I'll just say, uh, to begin with, uh, when I say performance intensive, I basically mean this is a feature that you can expect um, the frame rate to go quite low on, uh, I guess, weaker machines. Um, so it's something you want to consider. Like, for example, we're going to talk about HDR in just a moment. And if you have HDR enabled, um, which is high dynamic range, that's going to cause a lot of performance problems and it'll make your game run worse. So it's something to think about. Uh, is what machines are you targeting and you might want to have graphical options depending on how intensive or how graphically uh, superior your game can look and how graphically uh, I guess poor can look for lack of a better term so just keep in mind that range of performance and graphical quality okay so that's a mouthful um, to begin with what you see here is uh, obviously a game I recently finished um, if you want to check out where that's from there's a steam link here in the description uh, you can probably guess it's called Project Velocity. Okay, so the reason I'm using this is because Project Velocity uh, relies on image effects. So I'll hit play here for you to see um, what's going on, and it's kind of just, uh, yeah, I mean, a game with image effects, right? Uh, so to begin with, if you want to use image effects, uh, you'll need to include it through the asset store here. So you can click on the asset store, or if you're like me, you want to use the keyboard shortcut Control 9 to open it up. Um, and the asset store kind of takes a while. So what you're going to do is go over here and hit or type in post processing. Right. Uh, and you'll probably see the post processing stack unless something has changed since uh, the recording of this video. Uh, so we'll see loading here uh, and then it'll pop up with post processing stack. And it's obviously this one by Unity Technologies. And what you're going to do is there will be a download button that will load over here and you'll hit download and just import it and it'll just have um, basically, I mean, you can if I hit import here, it'll probably show me. It'll decompress a package. Uh, I'll cancel the second one. Uh, and you can see it just has a lot of scripts in here uh, and, you know, textures, etc. Oh, and there's Steam. Anyway, but uh, the, the point is uh, you have to import this package and then you'll have the tools, right? So uh, when we make a post-processing uh, effect or if we want to use it. To begin with, we need to make a profile here. So for example, you can go ahead and hit create and we see post processing profile uh, and we'll just say tutorial for this one. Uh, and so what happens here is you have all these post processing effects basically. And, and I mean, you can enable them, change the settings and all uh, and see what happens. Uh, but for it to actually do something, we need to have our camera here. So we have main camera. This thing needs to actually have a post-processing behavior script, um, which then references a post-processing -pro profile. Sorry, <laughs> it's quite an alliteration. So uh, you can go and reach the post-processing uh, profile here. So let me go and find mine, right? So it's actually don't know exactly where that is. So let me locate it here. Uh, okay, it's called main PPP. So I'll type in main PPP. Click on it, and you can hit the X here, just a little tip, uh, and it'll actually take you to where that directory is. Okay, so that's our main PPP, uh, and you can see I have stuff enabled here, right? Uh, and, and configured to look a certain way. Um, so, I mean, why don't we go ahead and start with vignette, right? You can see right away I tap this on and off. You know, vignette is basically darkening of the edges of the screen. So, I mean, I can raise the intensity here, so like a crazy dark, if I 
wanted to do that for some reason. And you know, smoothness is basically how round it's going to be. Or actually, that's uh, it's more of just. I mean, yeah, it's smoothness. It's kind of self-explanatory. Roundness is rather how uh, round or square the actual ellipse in the center is going to be. Um, so that's something to keep uh, consider. I'm going to go ahead and undo some stuff just to bring it back kind of to where it was. And you know what? Whatever. It doesn't really matter. I'll just do something to make it look similar. Okay, anyway, point is that's vignette. Uh, so I'll disable that to kind of isolate what these are. Uh, and then we can check out uh, chromatic aberration, right? So you see in Project Velocity, there's this kind of effect of you can see like blue and red coming off of the text. That's what this is. See? Much less distorted. Um, but the point of this was to kind of get that uh, retro effect as if the screen was damaged or uh, there was some sort of distortion or you know interference to make it uh, have that effect. And that kind of happens like at the edges. Uh, more so than you can see here in the center. There's not as much uh, distortion. Okay, so that's chromatic or aberration. I'll take that off. Uh, and then bloom. Bloom is a big one. Uh, it's using HDR. Um, and that one really has a performance effect. But notice how different the game looks uh, without the bloom on. So that, that's a big one for this game, actually. Uh, because, I mean, if you look at the game, the graphics are very simple, very low poly. Uh, but it's really the image effects here that are making it look good. Um, okay, so, and then we have color grading, which is making it also look a different way. So this thing is actually red, uh, but the colors are kind of inverted. Um, and that's not particularly something you have to do or should do. Um, the reason I used color grading was because I had played with the image effects and I liked uh, how the game ended up looking. So I decided I'd leave it that way with inverse colors. Uh, but why don't we go ahead and just hit play here, and uh, I'll show you <laughs> how this looks without all these image effects on. Um, I'll get to one of the bosses here and really show you. I mean, this boss lands, right? Uh, and he's going to shoot lasers, and they're going to look pretty bad, right? Uh, so let me pause it while he's got these lasers on. I'll turn on bloom. Uh, I mean, chromatic aberration, vignette. Let me fix the vignette to look better. Uh, turn off rounded roundness. Okay, yeah. So, so this is kind of uh, what the game's looking like. And notice that it was just with this uh, post processing uh, stack that really made this game look good, right? Uh, and and basically how you do it is you have a profile here. You know, you can turn stuff on and off, and it's just the camera is going to need to reference uh, that post processing file. So that's really uh, that's really it. I mean, this is really how you uh, put in image effects and make the game look a little bit better. Um, and yeah, I mean, there are some other details that are not really apparent in this game, uh, but they, they look very good. Like, for example, depth of field is a, one of my favorites, right? It, what it does is basically uh, if something is close to you and in the center of the camera, not specifically, but kind of the focus of the camera, uh, it'll do this effect where the background is kind of blurred and make the game uh, really focus and just have this nice appealing look. Uh, you can actually look at a comparison with Skyrim, for example, and Skyrim Special Edition to see the difference uh, that depth of field really makes. And that was really a huge one in Skyrim, so uh, that one's beautiful. Uh, motion blur is also very pretty. You can guess what that does, right? It, it blurs things that are moving quickly, makes them look like they're more in motion. Uh, makes it look a little bit more realistic, but also a little bit more unrealistic. Hard to explain, so make sure to check that out as well. Uh, other thing to keep in mind is motion blur is also very performance intensive uh, in my experience. I had it on earlier in this game, but it's not really noticeable, so I had disabled it for performance reasons. So keep that in mind. Um, and ambient occlusion I also had on. I think it looks better with it, but again, performance, so I just took it off for the sake of it not really mattering. But but what it does is uh, things next to each other, basically geometry next to each other, uh, will kind of have these, they basically look like shadows, but it's basically just darkening of the edges of geometry drawn, drawn over each other. Um, it's not too performance intensive, but you know, uh, why have it on if you don't need it, right? <laughs> and then uh, anti-aliasing is, of course, a classic. Uh, I believe I have anti-aliasing enabled with regular Unity anti-aliasing. Uh, 
to be honest, I don't really know the uh, difference between the anti-aliasing of the image effect and the uh, built-in Unity. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's something that you might want to do research on on your own. But basically, anti-aliasing will make the edges of uh, geometry less jagged. It'll make them kind of get smoothed off and look more like they're, look more immersive, I guess, is uh, the word. Basically, it looks more like it's a part of the world rather than geometry in front of geometry. OK, uh, so those are kind of the main uh, image effects that I actually pay attention to. Uh, the rest of these are, I mean, they're more stylistic, I think, in my opinion, right? So grain, I mean, you can see, you can see why I don't have that on. Um, but yeah, it can, it can actually look quite interesting. OK, so that's actually how to uh, import the image effects, how to use them, um, and which ones to use and which ones can really damage your performance, but also make your game look very good. So keep that in mind when you're working on this. And oftentimes, uh, you know, if you're making something like a first person or a large uh, game where there's a lot of stuff going on, uh, keep in mind the difference of computers that are going to be running your game. So maybe you want a very low performance options version and also a very high performance uh, version. Just make sure to keep those options inside of your settings so that players can actually play your game uh, regardless of the fact that maybe they can't run it and maybe they don't have the best computer. Okay, with all that said, uh, if you want to check out a, a free ebook on all the game dev tools that you need to make your first game, go ahead and click on the card in the top right. Uh, check that out, it's totally free. Uh, and we also have a sample video from the course that we uh, made on how to make your first game. Uh, if you want to check out that free video, you can also click in the card in the top right now. And with all that said, I will see you in the next video and have a good day.